Okay, so we have the function f of x equals 3x plus 1, and what we want to do is find its inverse. So obviously the topic for this video is function inverses. And one uh, thing that you want to know right off the bat is that um, not all functions have an inverse. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, I want to say why that is, but how we would know or how you can determine whether a function has an inverse. Then obviously we're going to find the inverse. And then what does it mean when you have a function and its inverse? There's some kind of relationships between the function and the inverse. There's some basic uh, concepts, algebraic principles that you should be familiar with, right? So you just don't want to find the inverse of a function and be like, hey, I have the inverse. What does it mean? Well, it should mean something to us, right? So we're going to get into all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online uh, math help programs there is. So if you need to take a full uh, comprehensive online math course, I have uh, plenty of courses to offer. And if you need assistance in a uh, course that you're currently in, uh, my math help program can uh, help you out as well. So if you're interested uh, in my math help program, you can find a link to it in the description of this video. Now, one thing that I um, offer, uh, just a quick uh, overview of my math help program, all my courses, I have full comprehensive lessons, way more than what I do on YouTube. And plus, I um, solve thousands of problems. And what I really do is try to teach you how to solve the most common problems you're going to face in middle and high school mathematics and even um, basic level college math. Okay. Now, if you are a math student, I must stress the importance of note taking. It is uh, kind of the golden rule of math that I've seen over decades of teaching mathematics. And that is those students who take great math notes almost always have great math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who... Uh, rather look at their cell phone or talk to their best friend like maybe I used to do way back in the good old days. Uh, then they wonder why they don't understand math or they struggle math. Listen, okay, note-taking is, uh, is a reflection of your focus in class, okay, and it takes a lot of effort to take excellent notes, okay. So you really want to, um, you know, look at your notes and just you know, ask yourself honestly, hey, am I really paying attention? Do I have all the information I need in my notes? Okay, so there's always room for improvement. If you um, uh, obviously aren't taking notes or really sloppy or whatnot, don't feel bad. Just start sticking, start taking good notes now. Okay, but in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer very detailed, comprehensive math notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one. Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find a link to those in the description of this video as well. All right, so we got um, a function, and we're going to want to find its inverse. So this is the notation for a function. And this little notation right here is probably the most common notation for uh, a function's inverse, okay, or the inverse function. All right, now, what does it mean to have a function and its inverse? Well, let's say here... I have a function, and let's say this is uh, its inverse function. Now, I'm just going to make up a function. Let's um, now, if you're not familiar with what I'm going to be doing here, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm going to explain it. So, just give me one second because this is uh, important. All right. So, what I'm writing here is domain and range. Now, if you're not um, strong in your understanding of functions, then you want to check out some of my um, videos. Actually, I have quite a bit of videos on my um, in my algebra and pre-algebra playlist on my YouTube channel that explains functions. Of course, if you really want to learn this stuff, um, you can also go into my algebra course, for example, and I uh, obviously thoroughly teach on functions. But um, and, uh, when we have a function, you have a domain and range, okay? So hopefully these words mean something to you. So domain and range, and this is kind of a um, one way we can model uh, the domain and range of a function, okay? So let's say our domain is one, two, three, okay? This is the set of input values into our function, all right? Now, if you're getting a little bit lost here, just relax. I'm going to get to how to solve in, uh, this and find the inverse function in one second. But here's the thing. If you are like, ah, all I need to know is how to find the inverse function. Okay, that's great. I can teach you this. Super simple here in just one second. But if you don't understand this stuff, then what's the point, right? Then you're, you're missing the, the fundamentals here. 
So let's say I have um, a function and, and its domain is one, two, three, and let's say it goes to five, six, seven. In other words, uh, one maps to five, two goes to six, and three goes to seven. So you can see this more visually is like, okay, right here, um, if I plug in f of one into my function, I get five, for example, right? Or if, if I plug in f of two into a particular function, I get six, okay? So this is what we're kind of talking about in this mapping diagram. So the domain, this is the set of all input values, and then the range here is a set of all output values. So you can kind of think of it in uh, this manner, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's say this is my function and it maps in this particular way. So what would the inverse function look like? Well, one of the big things you can think about in terms of the, uh, a function and its inverse is that the domain and range are switched. In other words, the range, all these values, okay, just a real quick re um, rehash on the definition of domain and range, the domain is the set of all input numbers we can we can plug into the function, okay? The range is the respective output numbers. So when you have a function right here, okay, the inverse function, the domain and range are switched, okay? So in other words, the range right here, five, six, seven, becomes the domain of the, of the inverse. So right here, five, six, seven, okay? And then we got one, two, three. This is the domain. This becomes the range of the inverse. So one, two, three. So here, five maps to one, six maps to two, seven maps to three. So let's just kind of see this here. If I have f of two, for example, is equal to six right here in my inverse function, f of negative one, all right, this is my inverse of six is uh, equal to two. Okay, so... A inverse function kind of undoes, uh, kind of gets us back to um, baseline, if you will, it reverses things, okay? So this is a good way to think about um, a function and its inverse, but you certainly need to know that the domain and range are, are reversed. Now, a couple other things we want to know, let me go ahead and erase this here, is um, the graph, okay, of a function and its inverse. All right, so let me just quickly show you this here. So let's say I have a little x, y plane. X and y, it's not perfect, this is just a quick sketch. So let's say uh, I have a graph or a graph of a function. So let's call this my f of x, okay? Now, one thing that uh, you need to know, okay, when you have a function, and if this function here has an inverse function, let's say use our little notation like this, this graph, the graph in the functions, uh, the, the function and its inverses graph is going to be symmetric along this line here. I'm going to kind of draw it or the best I can. Of course, I'm kind of freehanding, sketching here. This is the y equals x line, okay? Y equals x line, and it's kind of a kind of terrible line, but you kind of get the idea, all right? It's a 45-degree angle, and it runs through the origin, okay? So symmetric means what? Well, it means that uh, this, uh, right here, okay, this is kind of this line, and it, its inverse is going to be like a mirror image. So in other words, this, let me just see if I can draw it. Let me go draw it with a different color, all right? Give me one second. I'm trying to make this relatively somewhat accurate. It would be something like this, okay? This would be my inverse functions graph, and it's symmetric. There's a mirror image along the line y equals x, okay? So this axis right here, y equals x, um, for functions and their inverse, Okay, the graphs are symmetric with the y equals x line. Okay, so oftentimes you're asked to find the inverse and then graph the two lines, and you got to make sure that it, it looks something like this. Okay, if you, and so again, these are basic principles um, uh, about uh, functions and their inverses, right? The domain or, and uh, range switch, the, the function's graphs, and the inverse functions is symmetric along the y equals x line. Etc. Now let's talk about um, one other thing here, 
And I indicated that not all functions, uh, not all functions have an inverse. Okay, so let's just quickly uh, review something here. All right, let's say I have this graph. Okay, and I say, all right, here is a graph. Let me erase this. Does this graph here represent a function? Okay, so is this a function or not? All right, so how can we tell? Well, graphically, uh, there's something called the vertical line test. Okay, we want to use the vertical line uh, test, and that means if I just draw a vertical line anywhere through this graph and it, it chops through the graph one time, only one time, so here it crosses through once, 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 it's, it's just perfectly okay. So if this graph that represents uh, some, uh, may represent a function, if it passes the vertical line test, then in fact, this graph is a function, okay? So, excellent, all right? So this is a function, and uh, that makes us happy. Now, let's uh, erase this, and let's say I have this, okay? An ellipse or something like this, okay? Is this a function? Well, let's uh, uh, put the vertical line test on it, and we put a vertical line through anywhere along this, guess what? It's chopping through that graph more than one time, all right? It's going through uh, two times here, so this fails the vertical line test, so this is not a function, okay? This would be described as a mathematical relation, okay? So what you got there in the world of uh, functions is you have, uh, let me use my other color here, we have uh, relations, okay? Relations. And those are basically x, y points on the graph. And then inside of relations, some relations are functions. Okay, and then some functions have inverses. All right, so let's get back to how do we know if a function has an inverse or not. So just because something is a function, right, doesn't mean that it has an inverse. So um, and let's go back to our little parabola like so. Okay, so this thing, again, passes the vertical line test. All right, vertical line test, it passes. Yay, it's a function, okay? Is this a function? Yes, it is. You know, this could be something like uh, um, f of x equals x squared minus three, something like that, okay? This is a parabola, and uh, it definitely is a function. But if I was to say find the inverse function, okay, well, I don't know if it exists, all right? We don't even know if it exists. How can we tell? Well, there's another test and that test is called the horizontal line test. So how do you think the horizontal line test uh, works? Well, it works just like the vertical line test, but obviously we want to use a horizontal line, okay? So if I draw a horizontal line and it chops through the function more than once, what happens? Well, this fails the horizontal line test, okay? Meaning that this function here, okay, this one that we're, we have graphically, does not have an inverse. All right, so these are things you need to know. Um, obviously, you know, we want to find the inverse. We're going to get to that in a second, but you need to understand that not all functions have inverses. You need to be able to determine why that is. And then if we do have a function and, a, and an inverse, what does that mean? Okay, we talked about domain and range switching and graphically what that means. And then there's even an additional definition, which I'll kind of get into here very briefly. But first, let's get right to the good stuff here and uh, uh, find the inverse function. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, f of x here, when you have a, any function, f of x, you can always think of that as y, okay? So this is a linear um, function, okay? Remember, f of x is the same thing as y, right? So I could either write an f of x or a y. So what we wanna do is write our functions uh, right here, write this equation, with the y. So we're going to replace f of x with the y again. Let's just uh, remind ourselves that f of x is equal to y. Okay, so I'm going to write y equals 3x plus 1. That's step number one. Okay, so y equals 3x plus 1. First thing you do is you replace that f of x with a y because they are the same. Okay, so that seems pretty harmless. So here we would just uh, technically uh, describe this as a linear function, and this is a linear equation. Graphically, they mean the same thing, but this is in a, a function kind of format, and this is in an equation format. All right, but again, f of x is equal to y. 
Okay, so once you've done that, the first thing you're going to do, or I guess that's the second thing, is we're going to switch the X and the Y. Okay, we're going to uh, switch positions here. Okay, so wherever the Y is, we're going to put X, and wherever the X is, we're going to put Y. So that's pretty obvious uh, in terms of what we're going to do. We're going to put X equals 3Y plus 1. Okay, so... We're getting there. If you understand uh, so far what I'm doing, then excellent. Now, the next step and the last step is going to be we're going to solve for y now. We're going to solve for y. So we have x equals 3y plus 1, and we know that um, the left-hand side of an equation is always equal to the right-hand side of the equation. So I'm going to write this this way. 3y plus 1 is equal to x. It's the same thing as x equals 3y plus 1, but I know I'm going to be solving for y. I like to have my variable here on the left. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for y. And I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. And I would get 3y equals x minus 1. Okay, let me give myself some more room. Now, uh, when you're doing these inverse functions, I think it's a good idea to put some parentheses, okay, around this here, all right? Um, it's just kind of good uh, format, uh, algebraic format to do that. You don't have to do that. Um, I'll actually show you a couple different ways you can think about solving this. But now I need to solve for y by doing what? Dividing both sides of the equation by 3, okay? So that's, let's see how sloppy I can get. I'm going a little bit too fast by 3. All right, so here we go. Y equals X minus 1. Let me give ourselves some more room. Let me do it over here. So Y equals X minus 1 over 3. Okay, so I just solved for Y. Now, I could also um, write this this way. Y equals one third x minus one, whoops, one third x. I should really put an x in there, right? Minus one third. Okay, so I can write this this way too. So let's say I didn't have these parentheses. And at this point, I wanted to divide everything by three. I can go like this. Okay. So both of these are equivalent, mathematically speaking. And that's it. You basically found your inverse function. Now I have y here, okay, um, in these equations, but we want to write and use this notation up here, all right? So let's go ahead and use, we'll use, um, yeah, let's see here, we'll use this one. No, we'll use this one. Why not? We'll use this one. Both are correct. So uh, y equals one-third x minus one-third. So that's be uh, one-third x minus one-third. Third. Okay, so there you go. That is the inverse function. And let's even kind of spruce it up a little bit more and give it the notation like this. All right, now, okay, so let's just quickly review what we uh, just did. All right, so remember, f of x is equal to y. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to replace this f of x with y. Okay, and then we switch the x and a y. And then I solved for y, okay? Then I solved for y. And, you know, if you're trying to take notes on this, uh, you can, um, in my algebra notes, okay, you get all this here laid out in detail. So it's just a little heads up if you don't want to write all this down. Okay, so we're going to go through and solve for y, and we can write it um, uh, in both formats. Now, here, I want to go ahead and demonstrate another thing that we need to know about inverse functions. And it's actually the definition of inverse functions as well. All right, and that is the following, okay? So f of f of negative one, all right, is equal to f of negative one to f, these are the composite functions, is equal to x. Okay, what does all this mean, okay? Well, basically, this means that if you plug in, uh, a function into the inverse or the inverse into the function, you're going to get x. Let's just uh, see how this works uh, real quick with one example. Let's find uh, the inverse function of the composite function of this. Okay. Now, if you're kind of lost here, don't, um, if you're like, okay, I already got what I needed out of this video, uh, then that's fine too. But you should know how to find the com uh, composite functions. All right.
So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be plugging in the F function into the inverse function. So here's my inverse function, all right? This is my inverse function right here. It's uh, one-third x minus one-third, okay? So now I've kind of wrote it really big here. This is my inverse uh, function, okay? We just uh, solved it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be plugging in. I'm going to evaluate this function with this, okay? So if you're confused on what I'm doing here, check out my uh, videos on composite functions, all right? So for example, uh, let's say I was going to find f of negative or f of 1, okay? What does that mean? Well, I'm going to plug in 1 into my function. So that would be 1 third times 1 minus 1 third. And of course, that would be what? That would be 0, right? Because this is going to be 1 third times 1, 1 third. Minus one third is zero. Okay, so you kind of understand what I'm trying to do here, but I'm not plugging in a number. I'm plugging in this function. All right, so this function is three x plus one. I'm plugging in the original function into the inverse. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So that notation is going to be this. All right, now when I do that. All right, I'll plug in the original function. That's 3x plus 1. So that's going to look like, what, 1 third times 3x plus 1 minus 1 third. Okay, let's see what we get here. Okay. So obviously, there's a lot to know about uh, functions and inverses. Okay, and uh, if you were just coming into this video, like, I just need to know how to find the inverse... This is all bonus material that, hey, believe me, uh, you're going to so impress your teacher. Your teacher is going to be like, oh, my goodness, I didn't even teach that. And you know that I'm going to give you gigantic A plus. Matter of fact, you don't even need to take the rest of the course. You're so awesome. You're dismissed. Go have fun. Right. So just keep paying attention and you're going to see what I'm talking about here. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and simplify this. So one third times three X plus one, one third times three X is X. One third, right? I'm using using a distributive property here. Times one is what? One third times one is a positive one third, and I got this minus one third over here, right, hanging out. So one third subtracted from uh, positive one third minus one third. This goes away, and I'm left with x. Okay, and that's what's supposed to happen when you have a function and it's inverse, and you take the composite function with one another. You're going to be left with x. Now. Here, I plugged in the original function into the inverse, but if I plug in the inverse into the original function, you'll be left with x as well. That's how you verify a function and its inverse. And of course, you can graph the two and take a look at the domain and range. There's a lot to know, okay? This is a big, important topic in mathematics, uh, uh, functions and inverse functions of one another. There's a huge amount of different type of functions that we study in more advanced math, like logarithmic functions and exponential functions, they're inverses of one another. So this word or these concepts of functions and inverses, um, you know, will uh, follow you as you continue to learn math. And I know that you are going to continue to learn math because you're going to love the subject so much. You're like, I understand. It's awesome, et cetera, et cetera. Well, hopefully that's going to be the case. But in some way, if you found this video helpful, enjoyed it, please consider smashing that like button, okay? That would be much appreciated. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, I've been on YouTube for a good 10 years this time. Great platform. Uh, I already have hundreds and hundreds of math videos organized in um, various playlists, basic to advanced math. They're all there for you, and I'm posting new stuff all the time. But if you really want my best math help, check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.